It's been almost two weeks since we last saw the Lady Hilltoppers for girls soccer here at Durfee when they came away with a big win against Somerset. Tonight, it's Bridgewater Rainham in town for more Southeast Conference play. Hello again, everybody. I'm Evan Massoud. Welcome to Durfee High School and welcome to the broadcast. The Hilltoppers coming off a big win on Tuesday night against New Bedford. They were on the road this time, and they completed a season sweep of the Lady Whalers. This time it was a 2-0 victory, not a blowout like the one that we saw here, but still a big win for the Durfee girls. In talking with Coach Roach pre-game here, she said, you know, we got a few girls out, and uh, so right now they're bringing up a few JV players and hoping to kind of pad the varsity roster a little bit as we get down uh, towards the stretch, basically. You know, we're past the midway point now and forging ahead and looking for a potential tournament berth. So the key is to get back to full strength, to get through some of these games. Durfee lost 9 to nothing on the road at BR. However, BR's field, considerably smaller, and it's real grass. Kind of like Dartmouth, if you recall, before the Indians replaced their field and put in the field turf, much like we have here at Durfee. It was a grass field, and it was not regulation size. So Coach thinks that this will be to their advantage, being back on their home field tonight against Bridgewater Rainham. We hope you'll stick around for all the action. It's coming up next at 6 o'clock start. Stay with us. This is just a good way to start the day. Like we get the blood pumping as we're walking around the school. So I you know for some of our kids, they walk to school anyway. So it's just fun to do it as a community. Well, you have all the different countries. If you go on their website for safe routes, you can see all the different countries walking and all the different ways that they do so. Um, it's really, it's really fabulous. We need to take care of our bodies and we need to take care of our minds. And by doing that, is having physical activity, eating right, and making good choices in our life. And that's what's very important because if you don't have that, health is wealth. If you don't have health, you don't have much. This was a great um, opportunity for all of the kids to get outside and enjoy the beautiful day. This is the 10th year in Fall River that we have had 100% participation. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laura Ferreira. I am the Director of Traffic and Parking for the City of Fall River. As the school year begins, we want to remind everyone of the school zone safety laws. Crosswalks are here for a reason, your safety. Please use them. Always wait for a crossing guard to stop traffic and escort you safely. Drivers, please use caution when entering a school zone. 20 mile per hour speed limits are strictly enforced as mandated by state law. By being respectful and patient with one another, we can all arrive at our destination on time and in one piece. Thank you for your attention. If you have concerns or questions, please contact my office at 508-324-2123. Let's have a wonderful school year. Welcome back everybody to Mac Aldridge Field. We are just about ready for this one. You see the Bridgewater Rainham Lady Trojans against the Durfee Lady Hilltoppers. BR at eight, two and zero, oh, having a really good season, but Durfee not far behind at six, three and one. Here on this October the seventh, a Thursday game here at Durfee, six p.m. start. We are underway. So as I mentioned in the open here uh, just a couple minutes ago, 
before uh, pregame announcements and whatnot. Uh, you know, the Trojans play on a smaller field, so this is uh, going to be interesting, you know, being able to spread it out and for the Hilltoppers to be able to do what they like to do, and that is they play wide, right? They really work the sidelines uh, and then cut back in. It's something that we've seen throughout the season. That's where a lot of their scoring chances have developed. Um, and, you know, a lot of times they were kind of getting blocked out in terms of, you know, the narrower field when they were on the road. And uh, it was a real tough game at BR for Durfee earlier in the season, a 9 to nothing loss. Um, so, you know, really a, you know, total turnaround. And, again, it's, it's one of those situations where, uh, you know, grass plays differently, number one, very different than here on the fake turf, the fake grass. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing, again, if you're used to playing on a larger field and being able to spread out, smaller field can hurt you sometimes. And I mentioned in the open about Dartmouth, and that's the um, same situation. Um, you know, Dartmouth had a smaller field as well. So, but yeah, and you know, getting getting back to um, you know the Dartmouth, I remember that was always something that was discussed, um, you know, not just by you know road teams at Dartmouth, but even the home team, you know, because actually, you know, for the Indians when they had a smaller field, it would hurt them going away because they're used to playing compact, and then they'd have to really spread the field. So, you know, it it, it it's pluses and minuses, you know, across the board, and it hurts teams different ways. Um, you know, for BR, I would think this is going to be more of a challenge. Now they have a larger field and more ground to cover. So where they used to, you know, playing in tighter confines, now you're going to have more space and potentially more room for the Hilltoppers to make some things happen. So, um, you know, I'm sh I know Durfee is very happy to be on their home turf. Um, you know, and I'm sure they're looking for some revenge as well after losing 9 to nothing in the first meeting between these two teams. Hilltoppers have looked good in the two games that we've covered. They had a big blowout win against New Bedford. Um, and they w beat New Bedford this past Tuesday on the road as well, a 2-0 victory, so they've swept New Bedford this year. Uh, and then we also saw them against Somerset Berkeley. That was a really good game as well um, two Fridays ago. That was the last time we saw the ladies here. And uh, we're going to be seeing them at least full broadcast-wise according to our current schedule. Of course, things are always subject to change, but... Um, right now, we have them scheduled for Thursday, October 21st. That's a home game against Brockton. Heavy rivalry there, of course, another former Big 3 opponent. So, um, good way to round out the year. According to uh, Coach Roach, Durfee has qualified for the tournament. Got that late breaking news um, actually after our open, right before we kicked back here for the start of this game. So, uh, the Hilltoppers have qualified, and um, so they will be in the tournament now. They can just work on kind of fine-tuning their skills and, and you know pick up a few f few more W's here during the second half of the season. Ten games in, the 6-3-1 and one record. And I'll tell you right now, if they were able to beat Bridgewater Rainham tonight, that would be considered an upset based you know just on paper, and it would be certainly a major confidence booster and a big win for them in conference play. That's going to go out of bounds. Take a look at the starters here. Let's run them down. Uh, we'll start with the Trojans, led by head coach Timothy Califf. Senior captain, number two, Jenna Quill. Junior, number three, Brianna Reed. Freshman, number six, Isabella Johnson. Senior captain, number seven, Maya Darianani. Junior, number eight, McKenna Columbus. Senior, number nine, Casey Connors. Senior, number 17, Emily Shea. Junior number 18, Lily Ford. Senior captain number 19, Lily Coelho. And senior number 29, another captain, Ava Forbes-Smith. And in goal tonight for the Lady Trojans is another senior, at number 30, Megan Aronoff. For the Lady Hilltoppers, a bit short on uh, bench players today. Coach bringing up another uh, JV player. A couple girls out. They're starting 10, or it's starting 11, excuse me. Junior number two, Destiny Alua Rio. Number, number three, a freshman, Caitlin Cucci. Sophomore number nine, Julia Raposo. 
Raposa. Sophomore number 10, Hilltoppers with a chance down low. Ball gets away. Sophomore number 10, Emma McDonald. She was right down in there. Had a good opportunity. Couldn't center it. Junior captain number 11, Amelia Dias. Sophomore number 14, Julia Hargraves. Sophomore number 7, Evangeline Souza. Is that one still in the box? Lady Trojans trying to clear it out. They can't. Hargraves trying to make the turn, and it's going to come out of play. We'll continue here. Freshman number 16, Abigail Saunders. Sophomore number 20, Annika Nunes. Junior number 23, Julia Matos. And in goal for Durfee, sophomore number 25, Abigail Carrero. And of course, Durfee led by head coach Ami Roach. That one sent towards the net and well high of the crossbar and over it goes. out on the field we'll stop the clock at 33 25 kind of early for a timeout that's uh, not something we usually see here within the first 10 minutes Seen an exciting week of sports so far. Again, uh, you know, recapping the week. Boys soccer on Tuesday. Very tough loss for the Hilltoppers. And a call that is uh, still being regarded as highly questionable. We got a little clarification on that. And uh, we have a shout out to my colleagues who kind of broke it down for me too, who have been following soccer for longer than I have. Um, you know, the call still, and I did, I did get clarification as well. The call was hands, but clearly hands was not the right call. The call should have been that, you know, there was a foul because of, uh, you know, the hit in the back, basically. So I was looking back at that tape. Again, you know, there's no hands at all on uh, Durfee goalie there, Chris Panchley. But there was a collision, and I think that's what they, truthfully, that's what they should have called on, because that was also a foul. They got, they both laid out, but there was heavy contact by both sides. I don't know, you know, it can go both ways. The bottom line is, at that point in the game, foul or not, it's always a tough call. And it hurt the Hilltoppers. Shot taken, and wide to the right, missing the right post. The Trojans with a quick surge there. Hilltoppers will have the goal kick. So Durfee had to settle for the loss, a tough loss against New Bedford in uh, a game that they fought back from 3-0 to tie in about 30 minutes time. So uh, it was a really good comeback and you know, can't let that, you gotta have uh, short term memory, right? You gotta turn the page. You show that you can come back against a tough team and you know, you just got to build off of that. Yesterday we had field hockey as the Hilltoppers and Whalers squared off again. And Durfee came from behind. They were down one nothing. scored at the end of the third to tie it 1-1 and then scored in the final two minutes to take the two to one lead on a uh, scrum in front of the goal. The ball had gotten lofted past the Whalers keeper and um, ball got loose and there were about five or six players in maybe a 10 foot area and the Hilltoppers were able to punch it in, make it two to one and they took that one. That was a big win for field hockey yesterday and now Lady Hilltoppers here Again, hoping to uh, keep things going. On, 
out of play and a throw in on the far side. That one's heading towards the goal line and Hilltoppers unable to get there. That was McDonald chasing it down. It went out though off of BR, so a corner kick for the Hilltoppers coming up. That one hooking away from the net, loose in front. Whistle comes, there was a Hilltopper that went down in the box. However, the foul against Durfee, so BR will send it off here from, from the goal. Line drive towards midfield. A good pass up ahead and good speed for the Trojans. Cutting inside, will she get the shot off? Backpedaling, sending it off the back, good block, but it comes now to another Trojan. Now in front, shot taken, and it's gonna sail. Now shot taken by Emily Shea. Set up there though by Forbes Smith. And really the work on the far side too to make that one happen. I believe it was number 18 there, Lily Ford. Here she goes again. Ford around the defender. And it goes out of play. Trojans should be looking at a corner kick here on the far side. And back down that way is Brianna Reed. She'll send it towards the net. On the ground. Didn't really get a good swing at it. Hilltopper is going to try to clear it out. Kicked out of bounds by the Hilltoppers. Forced to throw in and a reset. Just got confirmation here in the booth. The uh, boys had an earlier game. They played at four out in BR, and the Durfee boys beat the Trojans 5-1. to one. So that's a big road victory here for Durfee. Good way to bounce back again just after uh, Tuesday. Tough game to lose. And uh, so hopefully that's a good momentum builder for them that they were able to erase a 3 nothing deficit and now head on the road and beat BR 5-1. to one. That's a good night. Good afternoon for the boys. You remember they tied here one to one against BR. That was the first game we had coverage of this season. That was the game in which BR tied it in the final minute or so on a penalty kick. So to come back, that, that's a great win on the road for Durfee. Down the field, McDonald not able to get there in time. That goes out of play. And the Trojans will have the throw in on that far side.
McDonald showing her speed, trying to get there first. Aronoff had to come out and make the play because McDonald was reeling in the two defenders for the Trojans. Out of play. Well, coming up on 20 after 6 here. And, boy, we've had a nice taste of uh, late summer, early fall. Or I should say really late summer because it is early fall. <laughs> um, but, seriously, 67 degrees right now. We had just another fantastic day. And tomorrow looking to be equally as nice. So for, for football tomorrow night, the weather should be outstanding. We've had a great run of games. Tuesday was, you know, real cool, misty. Um, total 180 these last couple days so we're uh, very happy let me tell you it's great when we have some uh, some warmth in the middle of the season here because uh, come November we're going to be praying for this that's for sure usually by the time we're doing uh, playoffs and you know football during the tournament rounds and the non-playoff rounds and whatnot. Usually we're kind of bundled up here like Eskimos, like we're going skiing. So we'll take this all day. Once again, Aronoff out to make the play. Hilltoppers have sent it down the field a number of times here over the last five, ten minutes, trying to put the ball in front and give the forwards an opportunity to take some shots. But the leading... Leading just a little bit too far. Passes are sailing, and you know, McDonald is fast, but she can only do so much. Oh, that one went out of play. That one went over the construction fence. Cleared away, right back towards midfield. Hargraves comes in, able to get the toe on it first. Send it towards McDonnell. Now McDonnell passing it back. And it missed. Hargraves chasing it down. There with Coelho. Coelho passing it off to her teammate there in the middle of the field. That's going towards the corner. That was uh, Lily Giulio. Not one of the starters for the Trojans tonight. Recently coming in off the bench. That'll go out of play. Hilltoppers will have the throw in from close to midfield. Souza with the throw in. Good, strong throw in, getting over the first line of players. Now McDonald passing it back. And the Trojans able to send it down to the corner. Out of play. Towards the box, and that's going to go out of play. Corner kick coming on the right side for the Trojans. That's Brianna Reed.
in front. Ball, go, ball is going to leave the box. Back towards the far sideline and out of play. Hilltoppers clear it out, at least gets it away from the box, and it'll force BR to throw in down here on the near side, bottom of your screen. There is Coelho. Across the middle, missing Reed. Reed will send it back to one of her defender teammates, and they'll spread the field and kind of reset. Back to Coelho. Coelho now towards the middle. Shot taken, and Carrero makes the play on one hop. McDonald went down. Quick to get back up. A little bit of contact there in the circle. Johnson and Connors, the defenders for the Lady Trojans, doing a nice job uh, here so far. They've not let much get by them. And they're not afraid to play up either. They, right now, uh, Connors, both Connors and Johnson were almost at midfield. Already more than halfway through this first half. About 17 minutes to play before halftime. Trojans have had a couple more chances than the Hilltoppers. Centering pass. This is going to hook. Oh, it's off the post. Oh, there was some good, good hooking curve to that. I thought it was going to grab the inside, and it bounced outside. That was a great set. And a good, good job putting the ball on net there by Shea. Hilltoppers will have the kick. Alua Rio trying to get by. It goes out of play. Hilltoppers will have a throw in deep down the field. Far side, top of your screen.
Nice cut back inside. Shot taken and blocked. That was Nunes who blocked it. Down the field it goes, and once again, just a little too strong down the field. And the play made by Aronoff. Pass up ahead, good chance here for Jurphy. Now they got some numbers and a little bit of room. Shot taken. Oh, it doesn't get through. What a save by Aronoff. Not enough backspin off the deflection. I thought the Hilltoppers were gonna be up one nothing there. That is a tremendous save, full extension from Aronoff to keep it scoreless. Hilltoppers will get a corner kick on the left side here. Down on the left of your screen, left corner of the field. Corner kick on its way. Header in front, oh, crossing there. I think that was Hargraves and it went by her. Loose ball still down low. And the Hilltop, excuse me, the Trojans able to clear it out. Back toward the box and blocked again. And now the Trojans send it back to midfield. Couple good chances there for Durfee here late in the first. Ooh, through the legs, it's gonna be played in the back now. Passed back towards Souza. Taken, taken away by Shea once again. Dias. Both officials, simultaneous whistles. And a free kick for the Tr Lady Trojans. That one sent down the field. McDonald has it lofted back over her head toward the circle. And once again, Connors and Johnson able to clear. It was Connors that time on defense. Hargraves got it loose. Noon sends it out of play. They stop the forward progress and force a throw in. Also a chance for substitutions to be made. Towards the net, tracking and catching it is Carrero rather easily. Punting it away, coming near side, and Hargraves can't keep it in. Took a high bounce. It's a tough play. Tough ball to handle off of the punt. Good pass there from Forbes Smith to Shea. Cut off by Dias. No, excuse me, um, Souza. Souza number seven on the near side. Dias is number 11. She's been in kind of in the middle of the field. Across the box. Kept in, oh boy, a chance here. Right at Carrero, and she plays it on the second chance. Kind of batted it, and it went straight in the air. 
That shot taken, sheesh, about 10 feet away. Point blank range, that's a tough play. And uh, Carrero with a nice save. Quick to react as we roll up on the final 10 minutes here in the half. That one skips by. Shot taken. Off the crossbar. Carrero down onto the turf, gets back up, and it's cleared out by the Hilltoppers. So twice the Trojans with wide open shots. One hits the post, one hits the crossbar. <laughs> this game could easily be 2 nothing BR right now. When you look at those shots, when it hits the posts or the crossbar, I mean, sometimes it, it really could go either way. There's so little room. to Free kick coming, sailing toward the box. One hopper, and it's going to go ride the goal line, keeping it in. And then clearing it on the side. So no corner kick. In fact, it's going to be a Durfee throw-in from well up the field. And another timeout here. So we've seen timeouts from both sides here in this first half. That's rather rare. Eight forty-seven left to play here in a scoreless first half to this point. Whistle sounding here at field level as our officials warning the teams that time is running out on the timeout. Both sides head back out. Hilltoppers will have a throw in on the right side, near side. And that'll resume play right on the whistle. Clock is running. Under 10 minutes here in this first half. Out of play. Durfee ball, Trojans were looking for a foul there, but truthfully, it, it looked more like it is a tough collision. No whistle there either. A little more contact that time, but on the other side of it, I was just going to say when the Trojans were looking for a whistle there, uh, Forbes Smith, it kind of looked honestly like she just kind of went down on her own, like she might have rolled her ankle or just lost her footing, but that time some contact, and uh, Hargrave's not getting the call.
Free kick coming for the Trojans on the far side after the whistle sounds. Good kick down toward the box. and It'll be a foot race to it, protecting defensively so Carrero can make the play. Hargraves gets it loose, a little bit of a check there. Trying to get through traffic, cut off. That's a nice turnaround there from Coelho. Bring the ball back the other direction. Good reverse move. Deep in the box, it goes out of play. Gonna give Durfee some credit here. Defensively, they've really had to work in this first half. The Trojans have they've had a pretty decent press. Um, they've kept the ball upfield here quite a bit. The Hilltoppers have had some chances that certainly have, but I'd say the the balance leans a little bit towards BR in this first half, uh, given some of the shots that they've had and. The passing has been really strong in terms of trying to get through everybody. You know, Hilltoppers haven't been able to penetrate as well. That's a tough collision there. Have not been able to penetrate the Trojans' defense as much. They're getting at a free kick out of it here. Another chance here. Oh, and cleared out. That's a big clear quickly coming in to send it away as Shea had taken a shot earlier and sent it off that left post. It will be a corner kick on this near right side. Ball coming in, loose in front, goes out of play. We'll do it again. Coming in high this time, header. It's still in the box. It goes out of play, actually. Went far back, and now... Another reset, and another corner kick coming as uh, Connor's gonna send it away from the far side now. Gets back to Connor's all the way at the sideline. Good block, it, it'll leave the box at least. Now sent back towards the net and Carrero makes the play. Challenging sequence right there. Three straight corner kicks for the Trojans. Hilltoppers really having to 
button up the goal down on defense and they were able to clear it all three times. Coming right back though, as we roll up on the two minutes. Coelho gets it free. Clock stopped here at the stadium. We'll keep ours rolling on the graphic. Less than two minutes. Going to be another corner kick for the Trojans on the far side. Looks, here comes the kick, hooking. A lot of physicality down there on the far side. Header is going to sail through the uprights. Hargraves really fighting with Coelho to jar it loose. Finally sends it back toward the defense. A good takeaway there. That's going to go out of bounds. And that is the first half here at Durfee. The Hilltoppers and Lady Trojans scoreless after 40 minutes in a very competitive first half here. Hilltoppers with a few chances early. Trojans creating some space in the final 20 minutes. Took a few shots that were close calls off the left post and off the top crossbar, but could not push a goal in. So we will... Stay scoreless here until we begin the second half. We hope you'll stick around as we head into the halftime break and the second half coming up just after this. Stay with us here on Fred TV. The Gothic Revival style arch at Oak Grove Cemetery signals the final resting place of some of Fall River's most prominent residents. Since 1873, thousands of funeral processions have passed through these ornate iron gates. War heroes, abolitionists, mill owners, and Lizzie Borden are buried within these walls. Despite fine craftsmanship and historical recognition, the arch was unable to withstand time and the elements and was in danger of collapse. Ten years ago, Fall River residents voted to adopt the Community Preservation Act, which allows for a 1.5% surcharge on property tax bills. This cherished landmark was saved with funds through the Community Preservation Act. In just five months, this time using some modern machinery, local contractors refurbished the granite arch and replaced sections of the gate. A uniquely Fall River work of art and a respectful reflection for the dead has been saved for future generations. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment.
good way to start the day. Like we get the blood pumping as we're walking around the school. So I know for some of our kids, they walk to school anyway. So it's just fun to do it as a community. Well, you have all the different countries. If you go on their website for safe routes, you can see all the different countries walking and all the different ways that they do so. Um, it's really, it's really fabulous. We need to take care of our bodies and we need to take care of our minds. And by doing that, is having physical activity, eating right, and making good choices in our life. And that's what's very important because if you don't have that, health is wealth. If you don't have health, you don't have much. This was a great um, opportunity for all of the kids to get outside and enjoy the beautiful day. This is the 10th year in Fall River that we have had 100% participation. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laura Ferrara. I am the Director of Traffic and Parking for the City of Fall River. As the school year begins, we want to remind everyone of the school zone safety laws. Crosswalks are here for a reason, your safety. Please use them. Always wait for a crossing guard to stop traffic and escort you safely. Drivers, please use caution when entering a school zone. 20 mile per hour speed limits are strictly enforced as mandated by state law. By being respectful and patient with one another, we can all arrive at our destination on time and in one piece. Thank you for your attention. If you have concerns or questions, please contact my office at 508-324-2123. Let's have a wonderful school year.
Welcome back, everybody, to Durfee High School. Halftime is over, and we are just about ready to get things restarted here at Durfee. Evan Massoud with you for the call this evening. Southeast Conference Soccer, Lady Hilltoppers and Lady Trojans, Durfee versus Bridgewater Rainham. Good first half, scoreless game. So some tough competition, a lot of physicality. And here we go. Be interesting to see here if uh, any game plans, formations change uh, for the coaches. You know, with a scoreless game like this, you know, I think for you know the Hilltoppers, I I'd love to see the offensive attack, you know, be a little more prevalent. And of course, I say that it's easier said than done. I'm, I'm mentioning it because you know, got to find a way to get by the defenders for the Trojans. They've been very tough. Midfield's been pretty tough as well. They've really done a good job, you know, with the protection of the ball and you know keeping the hilltoppers forwards from getting to the ball once you know they get into the box um, if they even get there so uh, it's been definitely a good defensive stand for the Trojans offensively they've had a few more chances than the hilltoppers but um, you know again you haven't really there's been no goals it's been a very tight game A lot of play at midfield as well. There's a rather blatant trip getting tangled up. Certainly not on purpose, but clearly a foul. So another free kick for Durfee. This one coming very close to the box. We've seen the Hilltoppers score from this far out during the season. Faking it, shot coming, line drive, tracking it and making the grab is Aronoff. Nice save. Hilltoppers put one on net in the first half that was all but in and Aronoff dove to her right, stretching as far as she could and was able to make the play. And again, the Trojans had two go off the posts, one off the left post, one off the crossbar. So, uh, very easily we could see some goals on the board from either side tonight, but hasn't happened yet. Matos sending it, comes back toward Raposa. Push from behind and a whistle. That'll be a foul and a free kick for BR. Jenna Quill sending it long, no good. Actually, that was not the actual kick. My bad, they were dumping that ball off. Now sent towards the net, that one off the top left, kind of skimmed and no good. Donald trying to jar it loose. Good footwork. Coelho clearing it out on the sideline. Now she'll wait for it. McDonald gets it away from her and now lofting it back 
the other direction, header. Almost like a tennis match, back and forth, right at midfield. And an injured player, Destiny Alua Rio, going down to the turf. Coach Roach coming out. As the clock stops at 35-20 here in the stadium. Injury time out here on the field. Reset play here. Out of play. Be a throw in for Durfee. Out of play. Trojans ball. They were looking for Emily Coelho, just let her a little too far out, and uh, Shea got past her as well, so Shea was able to defend it for the Trojans. Out of play on the far sideline. <laughs> Injured Trojan on the back side of the play. That's one of the defenders for BR. Looks to be number nine. It is, that's Connors limping off. Grabbing her foot, her toes. So she's gonna get carted off. She's gonna leave for a time. That might be a significant development as she and Johnson have done a great job tonight for the Trojans on defense. And we'll see if that opens up some holes on the backside for the Hilltoppers. As they try to get their offensive attack in rhythm. They really have not had a good rhythm moving up the field this evening. And a large part of that is the Trojans' defense. Been very difficult passing to feet, passing teammate to teammate. 
Good takeaway there, Dias to Hargraves. Hargraves has it taken away. See, that's what I mean. As soon as you get any space, even with the ball very close, the Trojans have done, they're right there, done a really good job at, the, you know, taking the ball away in stride. That is a shot on net, and Carrero dives, falls on it to her right to make the grab. I'll tell you, McDonald too is so fast, but she's she's met her match tonight too. She's had a hard time getting through. Uh, we see her break with ease, and the Trojans have showed their speed. Hargraves running into the defender there as she forged ahead. Stops progress, but it's a free kick for the Hilltoppers. She got up okay, that's good. No injury. Lofted toward the box, soft pass, and McDonald came flying in as well, but Aronoff had the ball secured. Throw in on the far side. That's a good pass into space. Matos. Shot taken off the toes, a little wide to the right. Good way to separate. Have some good passing there in front of the box. That's what you gotta do. Waiting on a free kick now from the Trojans after the foul. Daya settles it, sends it back where it came from. Out of play. Cleared away by the Trojans once again. Deep down the field, Noons looking back. 
making sure she's got some room to try to turn it around. Going back towards the sideline and out of play. Shot taken towards the net and it's good! <laughs> Trojans break the ice. One nothing BR. Developed kind of fast. I was just going to say, you know, the Trojans are passing pretty well down low up the field. Hilltoppers were slow to the ball. I said, someone's going to get a shot, and sure enough. So, nearly 15 minutes into the second half, the scoreless tie is broken as the Trojans take a 1 0 lead here at Durfee. up on ahead and Aronoff once again will get there first line drive not a very good decision there to kick it out like that towards the box McDonald cannot get there she's cut off and Aronoff has to come and make the scoop That was Johnson who got there. Another player for BR leaving the field. Cameron Levy. And Alua Rio. Looks like she took the ball or maybe an elbow to the face. <laughs> Dealing with a nosebleed down on the field as well. So physical game here tonight at Durfee. Trainer Kelly Mahoney has had her hands full tonight here in this one. She's been very busy. So both players will be carted off. start here.
Quick transition here, Trojans pushing down the field. Oh, great pass, but offside, clearly offside. McDonald lofting it ahead, and again, the defense just completely smothering, not letting her progress up the field. It'll be a throw in for the Hilltoppers. Towards the box, and on one hop, relatively routine play there by Aronoff. She's gonna throw it in. Taken away. And cleared out. be a throw in deep down the field here. Big hit there down at the edge of the box as the Hilltoppers try to clear it out. Hargraves involved in another collision. That was McKenna Columbus. And McKenna Columbus was the player for BR slow to get up there after colliding with Hargraves. Been a very physical night here at Durfee. Cleared out, going toward the visitor's bench and out of play. one's gonna go out of play. Halfway through this second half here at Durfee. Evan Massoud with you as we get down to the wire here. Three quarters of the game in the books. Hilltoppers, they've had a few decent opportunities, but can't seem to get past. Oh, collision in front. Or should I say a near collision. The ball came up and hit 
Aronoff in the face and bounced back forward. Hilltoppers would have had an open net. And now very quickly down the other end, BR turning the ball around. Great opportunity for Durfee. One of their best all night. Not able to make it happen. Timeout on the field. Stops the clock at 18-14. Third timeout of the game. It's funny, I just said on our last broadcast how infrequently we've seen timeouts in soccer this season. And then me and my big mouth, here we are, our third one tonight. <laughs> but uh, honestly, this is one of the times you tend typically would see it in a close game late in the second half. I'm not sure what was seen or the reason behind calling one just seven minutes into the game earlier, which was very rare, having a timeout that early in the match. So, But uh, here in the second half, 18-14 to play. BR one, Durfee nothing. We are in the timeout. Next time we'll see the Lady Hilltoppers is on Thursday the 21st against Brockton. Another six o'clock start. Their senior night is scheduled for Friday, October 29th against West Bridgewater here at Durfee. Um, however, that's in terms of our broadcasts. However, you will see the Lady Hilltoppers next Thursday the 14th for their road game as I'll be in Dartmouth for the call out there with DC TV. Um, so you'll see field hockey Wednesday as the Hilltoppers hit the road and head to Dartmouth. You'll see that one on Wednesday next week, the 13th, that's at 4 p.m. Girls soccer Thursday at 4 p.m. And then football, Hilltoppers will hit the road for the final two games of the season, of the regular season. Um, the first road game being at Dartmouth. That game will also be covered by DCTV. I'll be at all three of those road games. So you'll still have Durfee coverage. It just won't be from here in Fall River. It'll just be on the road. Um, so you can view those games live on the web, on YouTube or Facebook, live streaming, Dartmouth Community Media. Be sure to look them up on both YouTube and Facebook. Back to the field to play we go. Mentioned on uh, Tuesday's broadcast, kind of rivalry night, right? We mentioned Durfee against New Bedford, Red Sox versus the Yankees, and the Sox came out on top on Tuesday. Really a great ball game, and uh, sent the Yankees packing. There was a meme floating around on Facebook that really was rather funny that uh, the uh, Halloween superstores, the costume stores that always come in and rent out places that there was already a banner put at Yankee Stadium <laughs> to rent out the place. Obviously not true, but uh, pretty funny. Um, that was circulating on Facebook uh, shortly after the game on Tuesday. So the Sox Make it to the ALDS. I'll have to face off against another familiar foe, the Tampa Bay Rays. They'll be there playing tonight in Tampa for game one of the best of five ALDS. Gonna be a tough series, that's for sure. Tampa's had a really good year. Winning the AL East. And in terms of uh, record here in the 
AL top record in the American League. 100 wins for Tampa Bay. And 52 of which, by the way, are at home. Tremendously good home team. In the air, Aronoff making the play. Sox have been decent on the road. Not great, but decent. Now, it should be an interesting series, but it definitely will be a challenging series for the Sox. Free kick on its way. Nice turnaround. Tough play there for Raposa. Donald cut off by Dana Posick. In the box, Hilltoppers trying to get a shot off and cannot. Coming in the backside of the play, that is in the air. Header by McDonald. Shot taken, and it's going to be a bullet, but wide to the right. Foul call against the Hilltoppers. Played on side. Defense will have to clear it out. Be a throw in for the Whalers. For the Whalers, goodness gracious. For the Trojans, thinking about Tuesday's game. <laughs> it's been a long week. Please excuse the broadcaster's error here. Throw in for the Trojans. Coelho. He had the name right, just not the team. I had the player right. Oh, my gosh. Out of play, Hilltoppers will have the throw in. I've seen New Bedford twice this week. I have an excuse. <laughs> Clear it out. Another throw in coming for Durfee.
Pass to Hargraves. Hargraves gets by, a little bit of a bump. A lot of pushing and shoving. Yellow card against Hargraves. Hilltopper's going to get a free kick now down the other end off of the Trojans foul. Another foul against BR. Another free kick for the Hilltoppers. As we're under 10 minutes to play here. Down in the far corner, Hilltoppers will get the throw. Coming up on seven and a half minutes to play. The Hilltoppers running out of opportunities here to try to draw even. Out of play again. And another throw in for BR. Oh, 
McDonald cut off again. Hilltoppers will stay at home for one more game after tonight. They have a one o'clock game on Saturday against Old Rochester. And next week, another three game week. A rescheduled game at Brockton. Then the game on Thursday at Dartmouth. And then next Saturday at 10 a.m. the 16th at Somerset Berkeley. So uh, one more home game. Chance for Durfee, can they tie it up? Oh, what a save! Aronoff took it away! Wow! Tremendous save. That's two goals tonight, she is flat out taken away. Throw in on the far side again. Played on side, another opportunity. Oh, left it behind. That was a beautiful set. Dias, nice move through traffic, redirecting back towards the middle. Another foot race to the ball. Aronoff is going to get there. Trojans want hands taken away and it leaves the box. Carrera with the scoop. Great pass, but again, the Trojans cutting off McDonald, giving her no space whatsoever. 
Coming up on the two minute marker here. Free kick for the Trojans. Final minute. Regulation clock has run out here. And the Hilltoppers with very little time left. Another free kick for the Trojans. In front, loose ball, and it's gonna go out of play. Big throw in, they headed away though. That's a game. Hilltoppers lose a tight one here at Durfee. A one nothing loss, far cry from uh, the blowout loss on the road to BR earlier this season, that nine nothing loss. This game definitely uh, an improvement against a very tough Bridgewater-Rainham 
girls soccer team, but unfortunately for the Hilltoppers, regardless, it goes in the books as a loss. It's their fourth loss on the season. As BR improves to nine, two, and O, oh, Durfee dropping to six, four, and one. They'll have to turn the page quickly, practice tomorrow, and then a game on Saturday as the heavy midseason schedule here continues for both boys and girls soccer. But a fun one tonight, close game. Gotta love these. Makes it makes it very exciting when it's not a blowout. Blowouts are fun once in a while, but it gets boring. Here you're riding on every play, every possession. So T tough one for Jerfy to go to lose, but uh, you know they'll bounce back, having good success this season. They'll put it behind them. Trojans come away with it. One nothing. The final score here from Jerfy High School. Join us tomorrow as we wrap up the week. Trojans will be back this time for varsity football. Seven o'clock kickoff from right here at Jerfy. Jay Springer will be joining me in the booth for Week Five high school football. Jerfy's final scheduled regular season game in these first seven weeks, so join us then. Until tomorrow, I'm Evan Massoud saying so long and good night from Durfee.